Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Rob Shiva. So we're going to take a look at this debate, guys. Let's see what this thing is all about. I've heard so much about it. People are talking. I'm on the board of the Muslim Student Association, which is widely known to be a Muslim Brotherhood entity. He also has writings that are cross-posted on the English language website of the Muslim Brotherhood. He has cross-posted authors who call for the eradication of the Jewish state. He's a leading writer at CAP, the Center for American Progress, which right. also has Let ties go to, to the Muslim Brotherhood. Let me go he to has him. criticized cracking down on the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. And of course, he just published an article saying that he's against... Okay, so, okay, so Brooke, but so Brooke. he is connected to the so Muslim Brooke, before, Brotherhood. Okay, That's who you have on so your show right I, now. Before I go to him, you've just said he just, you've just written a piece condemning Hamas. So you kind of kill your own argument. Let me go uh, to Jaha. Well, he's sucking and blowing at the okay, same Okay, let me go to the man you just beat. Let me go to a job. Okay, I just want to say right here, look, I get it. You're emotional. You've got a lot of things going on. But this is one of the problems that we have is that they're completely aggressive this is nothing passive this is extremely aggressive in nature and it's like she wants to just kind of execute someone right away you know without giving a chance this is not really fair that they are using right now let me go to the man you've been accusing john what do you say to that well first of all excellent pronunciation of my name brooke thank you <laughs> also it's pretty amazing that for a human rights lawyer, you really don't seem to care much about human beings who happen to be Palestinians or Muslim or Arab. It's like a fireman who is actually an arsonist, but thank I you. I risked my uh, life not... to make a movie I'm sure... about Arab children. I risked my speak, life Brooke. to let make a speak. movie I'm... about Arab I'm... children and was given an award Brooke, by the United speak, Nations please. for my advocacy work for right, Palestinian let him, children. Let him so answer. good job on doing your research. Let him answer you, please. Wow, it's like, really, seriously, like, did we get you at the wrong time? Like, what's going on? It's like she's just really angry. You, you are the hero and you are the victim. Me. But let me say the following. Uh, let me say that, well, the person who accused me of being the Muslim Brotherhood and the person who's accused us, anyone who's pro-Palestinian, of being... A, a Nazi, which is, by the way, what Brian Mass said, a Republican. He no, said there's no such thing that. as that Palestinian civilians because they're just like Nazis, right? But anyway, let me say this, because Piers, I've seen your show. I appreciate Bro, can you let would you have done. speak, please? Do you condemn the Muslim Brotherhood? Let me say this. Okay, okay. I'm gonna go as Before he says anything, do you see how this keeps... This is a, a circular pattern. It keeps. It's a cycle they keep doing. Everybody starts off with, do you condemn the October 7th Hamas attacks? Everybody starts there. Look, you have to go back as far as when Israel was put into that territory as an occupational, you know, uh, property there. You know, they came there, I said occupational, as an occupied uh, uh, property there. They put that state of Israel in 1948 in that country in Palestine. And of course, the United States and, and, and uh, the United Nations, obviously, with the United Kingdom uh, after they basically took over that area uh the united kingdom uh, had had a, a war there and they took over that area and then they negotiated somehow with the united nations or kind of i don't know what they did but they they were able to get about for a declaration then they were able to actually instate this uh the state of israel there but since that time from 1948 till now they have had so many problems and for them to keep constantly harping on this idea that to try to start set this off with a like a moral standard or something. They're like, look, let's start from here. What do you think at this point? And I think that's really wrong. That's like taking away, you know, anybody can do that. You know, if, if you're looking at, uh, at a case with evidence, you know, you don't start where, where the person feels comfortable. You have to, you know, go back to the actual beginning of the circumstances to find out what caused it. There's always cause and effect in a logical uh, manner. And I think that that's what she's bypassing. And it's usually by subjective, uh, you know, uh, she, she's being very subjective in this about her feelings. She's trying to kind of like connotate this whole thing in a bad way. So I think it's unfair. Look at this. This is what I'm going to do because I've seen people with my melanin on Pure Show. I've proactively been asked to condemn Hamas. I condemn Hamas. I condemn Hezbollah. I condemn Islamic Jihad. I condemn Muslim Brotherhood. I condemn chocolate hummus. I condemn... Uh, I condemn anti-Semitism, I condemn Islamophobia, I condemn white supremacy. I also condemn Israel's occupation. I condemn settler violence. 
against Palestinians that has killed over 100 people in the West Bank. I condemn Netanyahu using dehumanizing language that you use, such as calling every Palestinian Amalek. I condemn the heritage minister saying that he wants to drop a nuke, a nuke on Gaza. I have condemned all of that. Do you, Brooke, join me in condemning everything that I have condemned? Because I think as a human rights lawyer, anyone who cares about humanity, they should condemn everything that I have condemned. Brooke, 100%. do you condemn? So why, if you condemn the Muslim Brotherhood, are you publishing with the Center for American Progress, which is strong ties to the Muslim Brotherhood? And why do you allow your papers to be cross-posted on Muslim Brotherhood websites? Why have you denied Jewish indigenuity to Judea? Okay, why you know what, you Brooke, I'm going to get it. I'm going to jump United in here. I'm going to jump ISIS. in because we're straying. You, you keep come mentioning. and you say these things on television, Brooke. but you write. These okay, I don't know if you noticed this woman, Brooke, whoever she is, the human rights uh, lawyer, she's completely ignoring everyone. I don't know if you understand in a debate, especially on uh, international uh, media uh, platform, it's a, the most extremely rudest thing you can do. I hate when people actually start doing that, when they just start interjecting above everyone else, like I'm doing right now, actually. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm the narrator of this, damn it. I'm the host. But, uh, you know, she, she should have actually just been very respectful at this point. It's, okay, allow people to speak so they can kind of get some clarity on what's going on with her harping the whole time. It's really hard to figure out what they're trying to say. Exact opposite. Yeah, bro, I'm going to writing. I'm going to jump in and come to Glenn. He's been waiting very patiently as as you guys have been going at it. Glenn, in a way, this kind of is reflective of of the debate I I thought we should be having, because it seems to me that uh, a lot of people are simply not prepared to tolerate other views, generally in society. We've got Before he says anything, I just noticed the pink tie. <laughs> I like the one that Pierce is wearing, the blue one. But the pink one, I'm not too sure. <laughs> not to take, I, I love the color pink. I just don't know. And the black and pink, I've never seen it. To a place where people get cancelled if they don't toe the line, don't have the opinion that a certain group of people have decided is the only opinion that's allowed. How have we got there? How has it been through this war? I mean, to me, watching Twitter X as it now is in this war, is like this terrible assault on the brain. Um, it's it's just people screaming in a self-righteous, often fake news-oriented way, uh, trying to scream their opponents into submission. Where has honest democratic debate gone? What do we do about this? Yeah, I think you're right that, uh, Brooke, your first guest, is a perfect reflection of what has gone so wrong with this discourse ever since October 7th, she did two things that has been really pathological in terms of how we're trying to conduct discourse about a very serious issue. Number one, she equates every person who criticizes Israel or who defends the Palestinian cause of being an Islam and Nazi or somehow being associated with <laughs> an Islam and Nazi with Wajahat, with whom I have a lot of differences, but he has true. never done <laughs> anything like that. The idea that the Center for American Progress. Uh, can I? You are doing exactly. There she goes. You must not be able to listen to other people. I want to hear from Glenn. Glenn. The idea that the Center for American Progress is some sort of crypto terrorist group, when in fact it is the most mainstream Democratic Party platform that hosted Benjamin Netanyahu, that completely supports Israel, just like the Democratic Party does, is derangement. And this attempt to accuse everyone of being a bigot or an anti-Semite. The minute they express any criticism of Israel, I think it's very toxic. But the worst thing, Pierce, is that um, ever since a month ago when this started, we have had a spate of censorship throughout the West aimed only at one side, which is the pro-Palestinian side. France banned all pro-Palestinian protests. You can have pro-Israel protests. You can go and say you think Gaza should be flattened, that all Gazans should be eradicated, like many people say. What you can't do, though, is march in opposition to the French policy. The British Home Secretary said waving a Palestinian flag may be a crime. In the U.S., they're banning pro-Palestinian groups. So we can have our differences. Obviously, this is a very... Very, very sexy about it. I just have to say that. <laughs> Even though she's, like, like, you know, making this hard for everyone by literally, you know, interrupting constantly... She gets away with it because of her looks. I'll give her that. Okay, that's the only thing that she gets away with. Okay, let's hear what she has to say. 
the issue. But what we should not do is try and suppress healthy debate through state censorship, through banning one side from expressing themselves or accusing everybody of being a terrorist and a Nazi no. because they express criticism for the Israeli government, something which many Jews like myself and many Israelis do as well. Okay, let me go to Brooke. No, I, I'm I want to sorry, ask Brooke, you're just Brooke, I want to ask you a question. I might see. Is this pro Palestinian? Okay, Brooke. The murder I... and bludgeoning of a Jewish man? Okay, this is. She, okay, this. Okay, she may be very, very good looking and everything and very pretty, but people that do go to the extremes like this, that's one picture of one person. Nobody knows the entire incident. It was an altercation between two people. I saw the uh, news uh, uh, broadcast of this. And the other person hit the person with the megaphone, and the person fell and hit their head on the floor. I'm sure it wasn't meant to kill him. You don't usually hear of people killing anyone with megaphones. You do hear of altercations where people get hurt, and they hit the floor, and they hit the back of their head. The back of your head is the worst place that you can get hit. That's why they don't allow it in any fighting arena whatsoever. You cannot hit the back of the head. Why? Because it can cause severe uh, hemorrhage to the brain. Uh, you know, it's a very soft part of the skull, so you don't want to do that. So I don't think that that this was meant to, to unfortunately kill this man. It's a life. Who the hell is going to really want to, I mean, unless you're over there in Palestine and you're now doing, you know, the Israelis are now doing what they're doing because the Palestinians or the Hamas group did what they did. You know, this is a whole other thing where, you know, violence begets violence. People seem to forget these things. But uh, before she takes that out of context, I just put it in context. At a pro-Hamas rally, these are not pro-Palestinian rallies. What is banned is pro-Hamas in Europe. Hamas is a designated terrorist group. And you should understand the difference between that. When you lock students in a library at Cooper's Union and bang on the door and threaten them with violence, that is not free speech. When you Beat up Jews because you are projecting your hatred of a foreign government on somebody because of what they look like or what their religion is. That is bigotry. That is not free speech. And your other two Obviously, guests want to cause this violence. 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 I have no clue. I don't know if anybody else is getting anything out of that. It just sounds really hilarious. I'm just like, okay, we're making no sense here at all. I want to bring in with your hat, please, to respond to that. Let me, Brooke, you can't just keep talking. Don't don't you guys have like a a, a mute button like we do on Zoom where you can just mute that person? You guys have the most sophisticated, you know, uh, technological (laughs) broadcasting system. You don't have a mute button. I'd be using that shit constantly right now. A powerful point. Let me go to with your hat for response. This is the big difference between you and me, Brooke, and there are many differences. There's quite a few differences, dude. First of all, she's a female, and she's got things on her body that you don't have. So that's the first difference. (laughs) Just kidding, guys. With the suffering of the Jewish people and with Palestinians, that when I see anti-Semitism, when I see Jews who are afraid in Europe and in America, I condemn it. When I see Muslims afraid of Islamophobia, I condemn it. When I see Wadiya, who was a six-year-old boy, murdered, Murdered there you go. Who's Palestinian exactly. American, I condemn it. When I see this man, the 69-year-old man, and they're, they're researching it right now to see whether or not it was a hate crime, I will condemn it. The difference between me and you is that when I see dead children, when I see 4,000 Palestinian kids who are killed, it horrifies me. As a human rights lawyer, I'm amazed why this does not horrify you. When you see 4,000 kids How killed, dare you? this is not How shocking. For you, it's you collateral damage. Of not being right now, the IDF, the IDF yesterday said, can I finish? I'm sorry. Can this I finish? Is the IDF yesterday said. And she, okay, she's really hypocritical because she started off at slander. I don't get this. I, and if anybody else doesn't see that, then you, I must be going crazy here. She started off accusing everyone, including him, as being Hamas supporters and, and supporting terrorism. It just, you know, just blanketed statement, you know, they're all this way and they're all that way uh, a generalization of, you know for with a bad connotation to it uh this is this is strange it's almost like she has some other personality that's working with this personality and they're both having a conflict inside them so <laughs> oh my god she's like a child. She's so like a teenager means, that means that ten thousand people were killed by israel in the past month four thousand children more kids killed in the past month then in the past three years of all war zones, uh, the conflict zones combined, I say it's inhumane and indecent. Do you condemn 
the 4,000 kids that have been See, killed, and as of yesterday, course, the IDF listen, said the only 60 people were Hamas between, operatives. Human rights lawyers, do you condemn it? Pro Israel do you condemn and it? the pro so called Hamas Palestinian movement is that we mourn the death of all civilians, where the pro Palestinian Hamas protests after October the 7th were out on the street celebrating the death of dead Jewish civilians. That is the difference. So and the other fired. difference between right, you let me, and you let me bring is that you fail wait, wait, to time understand out, please, the time concept out, please. I want to bring, sorry. of cause and effect. Okay, right now she is so disruptive, and I don't know if anybody's watching this uh, and you've seen other debates before, it's the most disrespectful thing you can do. You know, I mean, it's like you either feel that you're that privileged, either because you're a woman or you're a Jewish woman, or that you have a certain uh, uh, status or title, like human rights uh, lawyer. I mean, if that's the case, you're really out of bounds here and out of hand and really not following, you know, the same set of rules that everybody else is following. For some reason, you think that you have more privilege here. I'm not sure what the reason is, but I took a few guesses. That's only speculation. But if you would ever go on and tell us why you think it's okay for you to keep speaking like that, you know, and even Piers at this point, he's used to interrupting and he's even stopping you. That's like when the interrupter has to stop someone new, that means that she just took his place. She's the number one interrupter now. <laughs> I hope she doesn't have her own show. Imagine her like inviting someone, asking them a question, then answering all the questions for them. I don't know. I'm just saying. Please. You fail to understand Excuse me. the concept of cause It, is, it remains my show at the moment. <laughs> All right, Brooke, that's point. enough for now. I want to bring Glenn in. Is very clear. Brooke, you've had a chance to respond. International law is very Brooke, you've clear. had a chance to I'm respond. Sorry, Please respect I'm sorry, a the delay. other panelists. Okay. Glenn, yeah. I want to bring Glenn in. I'm sorry. Uh, Glenn, so I just, let me ask you. There's a delay, all right. There's a delay in the... Uh, and some part of her brain that, that doesn't understand certain things when people give you know people are asking her saying hey please uh, we have to go on please we have to go on that's a sign of a, a, a narcissistic soci a sociopath you know then no matter what anybody tries to do or, or say anything she has no conscience so she's not even hearing you that delay wasn't in, in in the technological aspect that was in her brain that's that's part of that that narcissistic uh, sociopathic uh, mentality so that's what the delay was yeah, go ahead. You're a Jewish man. Uh, when you look at what is going on here, I, I will be completely candid. I've said this to other guests in the last uh, couple of weeks. I've found what happened October the 7th to be a, um, an unbelievable scale of barbaric uh, terrorism beyond anything I've seen in my lifetime, to be honest with you, the way it was done. And I can... You know, people say that, like, everybody keeps saying that's the worst thing they've ever seen. Look, 9-11 was pretty damn bad, too. You know, that's the worst thing I think anybody's ever seen, uh, you know, so far, uh, according to a modern-scale city getting hit like that. But if you go back in the history, and, and, you know, you have to use history. You can't start from, let's start from October 7th and then move onward. You know, it's like the same thing they do with uh, religion. Everybody wants to start from where they think religion started, like in 2000... Well, I mean, uh, 2,000 years ago, that uh, when Christ was here, supposedly he, you know, started that religion. So every, now time is is calculated by that calendar and everything else. So it doesn't make any sense to me. You know, like Muhammad has their own calendar in Islam. Uh, Hinduism goes back. God knows. It, I don't even know. It's like beyond universal uh, understanding. Their timelines. They're like. Just, I don't get, you know, they're really, really, really long timelines. So everybody has their own uh, perception of what that should be. But why I'm stating that is because they're talking about significant factors that make an impact on the social uh, consciousness. And that's why I used all the great d divine uh, beings that, you know, that were able to be prophet-like. Now, I'm saying I'm using that as, as, as an example because she's using this as making it somehow really significant only because... It's Jewish people that were being slaughtered that day. And then if you had the true perspective of what she was saying in the beginning, where she cares about everyone, then you wouldn't have an isolated, in your opinion. She doesn't seem... These people that have all these uh, titles and statuses and money and fame aren't too intelligent. I'm just going to tell you that up front. And they're not very compassionate. Because she completely says one thing and completely says another thing right after that. Maybe I do that too in some ways, but when it comes to really serious issues where lives are involved, I think I try to uh, keep that very fair. 
and balance, knowing that even if it was a, an Arab, Jewish, whatever color, whatever race, whatever religious uh, background they have, it's a human being. And that's why I keep f uh, focusing on the preservation of life. I always say that it's all about the preservation of life. And you don't, you can't put a color or creed or, 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 or any kind of uh, connotation to it other than it's a creation by God or if you believe in aliens or whatever it's a creation that we couldn't do somebody put us here and that creation whoever gave us this life you know uh, we're using it or not us but people are using it to kill each other over ideas and over material things the exact same things that the Muslims the Christians the uh, Jews and the Hindus all subscribe to they always uh say that you don't do these things but yet they're all using violence as a method of finding a solution they're using the exact same thing that all their religions say not to use you know but i'm sure they're going to point out ways that that you know that you can use it but this is becoming a blame game and it's getting ridiculous if you i mean listen to them over and over it's the same thing completely understand israel's not only right but duty to defend itself but is there a line here that Israel shouldn't cross in its attempt to eradicate Hamas? When you see 10,000 Palestinians killed within the space of four weeks, and we know it's going to get much, much higher, and so many are children, is there a moral line that Israel shouldn't cross? Or is their argument that they've got to get rid of Hamas, and in war you have collateral damage, and in this case it's the civilians who are living around Hamas, and it's awful, but that's what has to happen. Every decent person found the Hamas massacre on October 7th reprehensible and morally unjustifiable. The question, though, is what does that mean that everything that Israel does in response becomes justifiable? And the answer is clearly not, just like everything the United States did in response to 9-11 which was also morally horrific and unjustifiable, killed 3,000 Americans. Everything that the United States did in response wasn't morally justifiable simply by virtue of the fact that they claimed to be doing it in the name of avenging 9-11. They tortured people. There were secret camps in Guantanamo. They invaded and destroyed Iraq, a country of 26 million people, giving rise to ISIS. The laws of war were created after World War II, ironically, when the world looked at what happened in World War II, the atrocities there, and said, we know there are going to be wars, but there have to be limits. You cannot collectively punish a population. That is a war there crime because certain people in that country have done bad things. You cannot just bomb people indiscriminately without regard to civilian life. And how many tens of thousands or even 100,000 Palestinians does Israel have the right to kill in the name of trying to destroy Hamas? Of course there are humanitarian limits and laws of war that were created after World War II that the Nuremberg Tribunal said apply to every country in the future, no matter how just your cause. And I thought that was the lesson of 9-11, that just because a country is enraged and acting with a quest for violence doesn't mean that everything they do in the name of avenging that terrorist attack becomes justifiable or morally defensible. Okay. Much of what the United States did wasn't, and much of what Israel's doing isn't either. Okay. That's a good point because let's say, hypothetically speaking, uh, let's say the Jewish community, hypothetically speaking, gets attacked by white supremacists here in this country. Is Israel going to want to start destroying parts of America to try to get to those uh, white supremacist terror groups? I mean, you have to ask yourself that question. What, what if that's a scenario? God forbid that anyone, anything like that ever happens. But what if it does? How does Israel react to attack on on Jewish people here in America? You know, that could be from Israel. Most of them are from Israel, right? That they come. So he would have to get involved with this, you know? But how does he deal with it? Will he start bombing the shit out of every single, you know, area in Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, you know, until they, you know, they find the ter terror groups? How does that work? You have to ask these questions because it's a good thing that this guy brought up, you know, what they're doing, starving out all those people and all those people having to get the punk here. So did I, by the way. Glenn, powerful words. Here, uh, thank you for joining me. I, unfortunately, you don't mind. Would you like, we run out of time, but I will, I will get you back on the program because you've been a, a terrific guest tonight. Uh, I've enjoyed that debate. Can I, last thing I just want to say is that Jews have led the protest. Jews have actually okay, led the protest. You said it. Jews calling for you said it, and I appreciate okay, it. Okay, have it. Have it. it okay I've got to leave it there. I'm sorry, Pat. Thank you very much indeed to my panel. I appreciate you all call, uh, joining me, Glenn, Brooke, Jarhat. Thank you very much indeed. 
okay, that was that was very interesting. I just want to say, look, you see what's going on uh, when they had. You're, you're probably getting it on both sides, you know. Whether when a Palestinian comes on, they're saying their side, and uh, when a Jewish person comes on, they're stating their perspective. The hard thing is to find is a place in the middle where they can both kind of come to some kind of understanding and agreement. But if they keep coming on and condemning and attacking each other, that's never going to happen. You know, and I'm, I was happy that Pierce did this to kind of show some fairness amongst other videos that he's put on where you kind of only see one side all the time. But people get to see, you know, I don't blame her or anyone in the situation how emotionally upset that they get. I mean, these people are acting from extreme emotion, and you can understand that, of course. I, You know, I wish that it would come to a point in the world where people would just look at life in general and be like, okay, when life is taken, that, that you know, we all feel the impact of that. And that's stated in the ancient uh, philosophies of almost every culture around the world. You know, going from the Native Americans all the way to the Hindus in India and all the way into Islam and even uh, some of the things that Christ said. I don't know what the what the Torah states about that. If it has, a, it must. If it's in the books of Abraham and Moses, it has to have something that states that idea as well. It probably uh, says it in a different way. But um, you know, the, 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 it's so strange to me how you have these powerful religious, um, you know, uh, entities, you know, these these countries that, that 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 have all this powerful religion in it, and yet they're 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 the ones that are are going down to the lowest aspects of of uh of human consciousness and just deciding let's kill these people you know on either side you know when it comes down to that they both have to stop and reflect and say what's going wrong here what can we do to make this better what can we do to change this they all have to start saying that you know i don't like what netanyahu's doing at all i don't like what hamas is doing at all but there has to be something done but uh all right guys this is rav shiva tsp the Spiritual Philanthropist. This is the Daily Sutra. I'll see you guys in the next video. Watch out for it. Have a great night and uh, or day or whatever it is where you are. And I'll see you guys in the next video, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.